Welcome to episode two of Pipes, Tobacco, and Whiskey. My name is Tom, and these are my sons, Nathan Hi. and Colton. Number three son, Ian, couldn't make it this time. Uh, he had a work conflict, so we're going to uh, do this without him for this time, but he did send me all of his comments and his ratings, so uh, we'll include those at the end. Uh, as you can tell, we're playing a little bit with the setup. I had a suggestion from some of our friends uh, on Instagram that we should uh, maybe tighten up the scene a little bit. So we're going to play with that the next couple of episodes and see what we like and what you like the best. So make sure that you uh, send us your comments and your feedback on that. Yes. Also, we've uh, kind of tweaked the sound a little bit. So we're hoping that you can tell a difference in the quality of sound. Again, if you've got any feedback for us, we would love to hear it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start with our uh, reviews and our, our impressions of our next tobacco. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> this time we're trying Kamoy's of London's Cask Number no. 2. Uh, it's made by Kamoy. Uh, it's manufactured by Scan Scandinavian Tobacco. Uh, it is an aromatic blend composed of Black Cavendish, Burleys, and Virginia. The uh, cut is a ribbon cut and this can be purchased in both a bulk blend or a tin version and uh, we've found that the tin version is everywhere uh, you can easily access it from any major website any uh, major provider or anybody who sells pipe tobacco you can find the tin version of Kamoy's number two available to you so uh, on the initial opening of this tin uh, what did what did we feel, guys? Uh, Dad, what did you think of it? I thought it was that was the best part of the entire smoke was the tin note. Um, you know, I got right off the bat got chocolates in it. Uh, I smelt just a hint of the port that was used as a topping, and uh, just a little bit of vanilla, not much. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the strongest part of the tin notes that I got. I, I like the cut of it. It was a nice ribbon cut. Um, like I said, really ready to smoke. The moisture content wasn't just insanely moist. It was ready to roll. Didn't really get an opportunity to dry it out and try it, which mm -hmm. we found kind of helps in enhance the smoke. But with this one, it was ready to roll. Uh, I got a lot of the fruitiness out of it, like a red plum kind of fruit yeah. note almost. Um, Probably and from that Virginia, the kind of grassy citrus. Might have been stuff. it. Yeah. yeah, and also I got a lot of the burly, the nuttiness. So it was just fruity oh, and nutty yeah. right there yeah. out of the tin, and that was awesome. So. It, yeah, it definitely right out of the get-go on the high level of the smoke. We all really kind of felt that hot, heat, sweet, molasses mm -hmm. kind of burn that came across, and uh, it it really burnt cr pretty hot on it. So when it, when yeah. it comes to levels of strength, um, it was kind of mild, but there was a lot of heat coming through. Uh, it was the nick hit was barely noticeable. I didn't notice the nick hit. I got quite a bit of tongue bite off of it because of the heat. Yeah, yeah. Um, not like an offensive amount, but it was definitely present. Yeah. So that's something to think about. Yeah. Well, one thing to mention is that we're actually trying the bulk version. Yes. Rather than the tin, tin. version, I've tried both. Uh, <clears throat> this particular, um, this particular tobacco, the bulk version. Um, I just didn't get any flavors at all. I didn't get any of the chocolate or the vanilla or the port flavor. I just got that kind of alcohol burn through the entire smoke. Yeah. Uh, so I never picked up on any flavor. So as far as the strength goes, I mean, it was difficult to tell what the strength of the tobacco was because I never got anything out of it other than just a sizzle. Yeah, did, did you have any changes, anything that happened to make it different from the top of the bowl to the mid to the low? No, not really. I mean, it, it was consistent, mm -hmm. but it was the same, all, that, that unflavorful taste all the way through it. Yeah. Now, like we said, we, out, of, out of the bag, we thought it was ready to smoke, but Compared to other tobaccos that I've smoked before in, in that condition, it just didn't meet my expectation. Yeah. Now, I've let it dry. This particular smoke is a little bit better because mm -hmm. it's much drier. It's been sitting out, but still, it's not necessarily uh, something that I'm prone to smoking. Yeah, and I noticed, like, in this particular smoke that I'm having right now, you know, uh, of course, before I was smoking just a regular shortwood briar, kind of like what you're smoking right now just a smaller pipe and I 
loaded it in my big boy, and uh, <clears throat> this is actually uh, by Missouri Meerschwamm. It's just a uh, General MacArthur five-star cob pipe, and because of the girth and the size of this pipe, it actually cooled it down for me a lot. Mm. So this is definitely a smoke that you, if if you don't want to get that burn as much as what we've got, let it dry out a bit and and uh, try it in something like a church warden. One of your bigger pipes. One of your bigger yeah, pipes, for sure, because it definitely cools it down. I didn't get the opportunity to smoke it out of my church warden. Mm -hmm. I only smoked it in my bones pipe. Yeah, the bones gentleman. I smoked it out of my. Uh, Pirelli quite a bit, mm -hmm. and also my Peterson. And those are all pretty short pipes, and especially the Bones pipe being really short. And the heat that I got off of it on the bowl, like the actual heat from the bowl, it was kind of intense. Um, usually the, the Peterson itself, the Peterson, it never gets hot. It's a really thick pipe, and it's really, really beefy, but I, uh, it still burned pretty hot. Yeah. Considering, I mean, I smoke a lot of Black Cavendish, so I'm ready for the heat. But this one, I was like, ah, well, that's actually hotter than what I thought it would be. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so it's it, it's got a little bit of heat to it. I smoked sure. it in, in a big briar, a little briar, in a cob. I uh, did not smoke it in any of my Meershams this time. And every single time, it was the same. It didn't matter to me, mm -hmm. uh, the change. Uh, again, I, I, did, I have smoked the tin version of this before, and it is a little bit better. The pricing on this one in the bulk form, we found it anywhere from $2.59 an ounce to about $3 an ounce. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we decided to try the bulk version. If you go with the tin version, uh, it, it brings the price up a little bit to about $4 an ounce. But you're going to get a better smoke out of the tin version. If you're willing to dedicate your money to... Um, the pre-packaged tin version that Kamoise is going to offer, you're going to get a little better of a smoke. I agree with that, but there's so many more out there for me mm -hmm. that in that price range yeah. that is so be so much better. Uh, you know, the Country Squire has a lot of stuff in that price range mm -hmm. that's better. Uh, C&D has a lot of stuff in that yeah, price sure. range. Sutliff has a, a lot mm -hmm. of stuff in that price range. The King uh, Samuel Peace. Gallif. I mean, there's so much out there that I, I would rather <clears throat> go and try something else at that price point yeah. rather than... And so, you know, my return on this one is probably not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, at the price point, I liked where it was uh, in the bulk. But like you said, it was like, what, 2 50 to $3? Mm -hmm. Let's say 250 for the 10, if you could find it, but going up to four, to, or for the uh, bulk blend, going up to the 10 at four, not convinced, you know, that extra dollar 50 cents an ounce, you know, whenever yeah. you start buying in big, in bulk, in bulk you know, pounds. I mean, it's, it's good, don't get me wrong, but I'm not sure if it's worth that much more, just, it, I, I don't feel like it would enhance that much, mm -hmm. just, just for that price. I, I will say though, even though throughout the smoking process, um, it's it's kind of left a bit of a heat and an unpleasant pattern on our all of our tongues. I get in the roof the, of my mouth the, as the, well. Yeah. The aroma though that we get it, it, when it comes to entering and leaving the room, the, the the area that the smoke permeates at, the smell is amazing. It's awesome. I think it's it I think awesome. it's a lot, I think it's really well. Nice. Yesterday when you were smoking it in here in the yeah. garage, I came back and smelt it, and you can smell the chocolate and vanilla pretty mm -hmm. pretty well in the room note. But here's the deal. For me, am I smoking it because of how it smells and how other people think about yeah, it? Right. Or am I smoking it for my personal enjoyment? Mm. Yeah. And the bottom line is, is that if I'm going to spend the money, you I'm going to smoke it for my yeah. personal yeah. enjoyment. Yeah, everybody else. And, yeah. and so <laughs> this one, uh, you know, although it does have a good tin note, it had a good room note. The, the, the smoking process for that 30 or 45 minutes of, of smoking it was not enjoyable for me. Well, you know, going back and thinking about the room note again, I was smoking it outside last night with you, and then Mom came out. She looked at me, she goes, I like the way that one smells. Yeah. I like the way that one smells. That one smells sweet. That smells good. What are you smoking? Yeah. yeah. A non-pipe smoker was like, wow, that smells great. Let's do well, that. Well, I mean, there's, like, like we've listed earlier, there's several other blends that are in that same category that offer the same level of uh, right. pleasure to everybody right. uh, at the at a better price or just as same level of price with other companies that offer just another product. Even Kamois offers some other blends that 
for that same price range that offer, in my opinion, a better taste, more enjoyment for the smoker and for the bystanders. And Kamoy is a reputable company. I mean, and again, the Scandinavian Tobacco Company is is out there. They put out so many different uh, blends and things like that. There's a lot out there. This one just didn't hit the market. Mm -hmm. So at the end of it all, what kind of rating do you think you guys would give it? I mean, overall, I gave it a two, uh, two shots out of five. Mm -hmm. um, the tin note, I gave it a strong rating. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the room note, I gave it a strong rating. But there's so many other factors within the smoke that got twos and ones mm -hmm. that I just, uh, overall, it's a two for me, guys. Okay. Um, I gave it a 2.5. I smoke quite a bit of aromatics. Slowly starting to get into Virginias and things like that. A few Englishes. I gave it a 2.5 out of five shots. Just a regular aromatic smoke. Yeah, and with my background in Virginias and a lot of Kia blends, I'm used mm. to the heat. So mm. I, I, I'm uh, agreeing with Colton. Uh, I gave it a 2.5 as well. Uh, it's just, I was a little adjusted to the heat, but it just... The, the overall flavors that I was wanting, the expectations out of the tobacco. After the just, smell. After you the smell, smell it, yeah, you like, smell yeah. it, and I'm like, ooh, you, this yeah. This would be great, and then uh, you see, yeah. It just didn't burn that <laughs> You way. know, and that's the way it is, especially with a lot of young pipe smokers mm -hmm. or inexperienced pipes, pipe smokers. They go into these brick and mortars that have, you know, maybe 15, 20 different types of blends to choose from. Yeah. And they smell it and they go, oh, that smells awesome. I'm good. Let me have, you know, four ounces of that. Okay. They end up spending 15, 20 bucks for four ounces of tobacco and they take it home. And it sits there. Yeah. For, for about six two weeks. months. Yeah. I'm, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. I'm one of those guys. They take it home, they smoke it, and it's like, uh, this doesn't taste anything mm -hmm. like what I <laughs> smelled in the store. So beware, you know, it's not always going to taste the way the way it smells. Mm -hmm. Now, Ian, on the other hand, he, when he sent in his review, gave it a much bigger... He seemed to like it He quite seemed a bit. to like it a lot more than the rest of us. Mm -hmm. He gave it a three, mm -hmm. which uh, I think on his uh, last video, he gave the other tobacco a four. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And uh, so Ian's really liking these high aromatic, uh, lots of flavor blends. And so that gives us our overall rating of a 2.5 from all of us. Yep. 2.5, all right. Bring it up. Here we go. Do I get the five, the, the, the point five? Yes, you do. Oh, you man. get well, the point five. I'm five. the oldest. I yeah. get the biggest. Point, so that's, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's, that's how you're going to do it this time. Fair. Forever. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, that's it for us today. And, uh, we just want to let you guys know we really appreciate your comments. We really appreciate your uh, feedback. Uh, we want to let you know if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment in the sections down below. Uh, once again, we really appreciate your time today. And uh, Well, hold on. Next week is hmm. Father's Day. We haven't decided if we're going to do an episode for Father's Day. I mean, if we do something, there'll be something posted, but it may be just me saying happy father's day and and maybe doing a, a, a tasting or something like that but the next video that we do with all four of us here is going to be actually a whiskey tasting so tune in for that mm -hmm. yeah cool. it's going to be great right on. so all right well if that's all we've got for today that is um where we appreciate ch uh, checking out our video oh my grandson yeah you got to tell about caleb uh, my grandson came out while we were taping last week, and after it was all done, he uh, he said, Grandpa, what are you guys doing? And he said, well, we're making a video for YouTube. And he's he watches YouTube videos all the time about all these toys <coughs> and things like that that he likes to do. And so he was real excited about that. He made a little banner for me, and I, I'll, I'll show you. I'm going to get you a picture of it at the end of this video. Um, but... Uh, yeah, he he made a little little banner for me, drew it, and I'll again I'll show you this this uh, when when we close out. But he wanted to be a part of what we were doing too, so you know. So if you have anything like that, please send us. Uh, if you have any art or anything like that, we'll put we'll post it on our Instagram. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. he's seven years old, so it's not you know it's it's not Picasso or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. But but it's, it's nice. it was pretty cute. I thought it was really nice. It's, a, it's, it's my <laughs> pipe is used as the basis for the <laughs> yeah. drawing. Yeah. Oh, your yeah. monster pipe. Yeah. Again, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Have a great weekend. And just a reminder, make all your piping moments count.
Bye guys. So long. See ya. Bye. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here. All right. Oh, okay. So sweet. Cheers. Bye guys.